The life-changing magic of not giving a fuck. How to stop spending time you don't have doing things you don't want to do with people you don't like by Sarah Knight. Page seven. The art of mental decluttering. I was born a fuck giver. Maybe you are too. As a self-described overachieving perfectionist, I gave my fucks liberally all throughout my childhood and adolescence. I tackled numerous projects, tasks and standardised tests in order to prove myself worthy of respect and admiration from my family, friends and even casual acquaintances. I socialised with people I did not like in order to appear benevolent. I performed jobs that were beneath me in order to appear helpful. I ate things that disgusted me in order to appear gracious. In short, I gave way too many fucks for far, far too long. This was no way to live. The first time I met someone who didn't give a fuck was in my early 20s. We'll call him Jeff. A successful business owner with a large circle of friends, Jeff simply could not be bothered to do things he didn't want to do. And yet he was widely liked and respected. He didn't show up to your toddler's dance recital or to watch you cross the finish line at your 17th 5k, but it was okay because, you know, that was just him. He was a perfectly nice, sociable and well thought of guy, but he clearly reserved his fucks for things that were especially important to him. Having a close relationship with his kids, playing golf, catching deal or no deal every night. The rest of it could not give a fuck. And he always seemed so positively contented and well happy. Huh, I often thought to myself after spending time with him. I wish I could be more like Jeff. Later, in my mid-twenties, I had a downstairs neighbour who was an absolute nightmare. But for some reason, I cared enough about his opinion of me to submit to his insane requests, like the time he corralled a friend to stomp around my apartment in high-heeled boots while I listened with him from his living room below, hearing nothing, but gamely agreeing that, yes, it was a little noisy. He was clearly unhinged, so why did it matter if he liked me or not? In retrospect, I should have stopped giving a fuck about Mr Rosenberg the first time he accused my roommate of heavy exercising in the bedroom above when my roommate had been travelling in Europe for two weeks. Then, nearly 30, I got engaged and started planning a wedding, an act that demands a veritable cornucopia of fucks given. The budget, the venue, the catering, the dress, the photos, the flowers, the band, the guest list, the invitations, the vows, the cake and everything else, the list goes on. Many of these things I, I truly cared about, but some of them I didn't, and yet I gave each and every one of them a fuck because I didn't know any better. I became so stressed out that I was about as far from contented and happy as it gets. By the time the big day rolled around, I had migraines, a persistent stomach ache, and a case of hives the same rosy pink as the floral design on my gown. Looking back, was arguing with my husband over playing brown-eyed girl at the reception really worth my time or his? Had minute attention to detail regarding the selection of past hors d'oeuvres really been necessary when I didn't get to eat any of them because they were passed during our photos? Nope. But, and here's where the tide turned ever so slightly, I had won one small victory. I may have had to give a fuck about the guest list, because I definitely gave a fuck about the budget. But you know what I never gave a fuck about? Seating charts. In deciding that all of my wedding guests were grown ass adults who didn't need my help in choosing a seat for the privilege of being fed and entertained on my dime, I had eliminated hours of poring over the event space schematics. After the wedding fuckscapade, I was exhausted. I'd been pushed to the breaking point. Yet, I'd also seen a silver lining in that abandoned seating chart. I knew that seating charts were supposed to matter to me, but they didn't. 
Instead of putting that feeling of obligation ahead of my own personal preferences, I just decided not to give a fuck and let the butts land where they may. And did anyone complain to the blushing bride? No, they did not. Hmm. Little by little over the next several years, I stopped giving a fuck about small things that annoyed me. I'd RSVP'd no to a couple of after-work mixers. I unfriended some truly irritating people on Facebook. I refused to suffer through another reading of your play. And little by little, I started to feel better, less burdened, more peaceful. I hung up on telemarketers. I said no to a weekend trip with toddlers. I stopped watching season two of True Detective after only one episode. I was becoming my true self, able to focus more on people and things that actually, as Marie Kondo might say, sparked joy. Soon I realised I had my own insights to share with regard to life-changing magic. Brings you happiness? Then by all means, keep giving it a fuck. But perhaps the more pertinent question is, does it annoy? If so, you need to stop giving a fuck. And I can show you how. I've developed a programme for decluttering and reorganising your mental space by not giving a fuck, wherein not giving a fuck means not spending time, energy and or money on things that neither make you happy nor improve your life so that you have more time, more energy and or money to devote to the things that do bring happiness. I call it the not sorry method. It has two steps. Number one, deciding what you don't give a fuck about. Number two, not giving a fuck about those things. And of course, not sorry is how you should feel when you've accomplished this. My method is quite simple. And this book offers you the tools and perspective to master it and to radically improve your day-to-day existence. In fact, once you begin implementing Not Sorry, you'll never want or need to give a fuck ever again. Page 17. Why should I give a fuck? This is one of life's essential questions, or at least it should be. Rather than blindly pressing forward and saying yes, yes, yes to all of the people and things that demand your time, energy and or money, including purchasing and reading this book, The first thing you should be asking yourself before uttering that dirty little three-letter word is, do I really give a fuck? You may not realise it, but the number of fucks you personally have to give is a finite and precious commodity. Give too many and you run out. It's like getting to zero in your bank account, which results in you feeling anxious, stressed out and desperate. That's not good. Later on, you'll make a fuck budget, which will help you value and prioritise and stop giving so many unnecessary fucks now and forever. But before we get to not giving a fuck, let's talk about when we should give a fuck. You should give a fuck if something, be it a human, inanimate or conceptual, does not annoy and does bring you happiness. Sometimes that calculation is easy and the decision is obvious. Huzzah! Very exciting. But more often, and the reason you need the not sorry method, you're not pausing to make any calculation at all, or you're making the wrong one. Most people give away their fucks without much thought. Feelings of guilt, obligation or anxiety cause them to behave in a manner that, while least objectionable to other people, is often detrimental to their own levels of annoy versus joy. This makes no sense and is counterproductive to living your best life. And if you don't want to be living your best life, you should stop reading this now. Still with me? Okay then, riddle me this. Instead of feeling guilty, obligated and anxious, wouldn't you rather feel empowered, benevolent and carefree? You'd be like Santa Claus, except instead of giving toys, you're walking around with a big old bag of fucks and only giving them out to the boys and girls you deem worthy. You can be the Santa of fucks. So stop saying yes right away to please others and instead take a moment to question not only whether you give a fuck, i.e. care, about the matter at hand, but whether it deserves a fuck, i.e. your time, energy and or money given to it as a line item on your fuck budget. It's only after honestly answering these questions that we can allocate our fucks to the people and things, tasks and events, ideas and pursuits that annoy us least and in turn offer us the greatest capacity for happiness. When you think about it, life is a series of yes or no choices. 
fucks given and fucks withheld. If you continue on your current path, then at the end of each day or week or month, you're bound to find yourself scraping the bottom of your own personal fuck barrel, which is when you'll realise that all those fucks you gave away were for the benefit of everyone but you. The not sorry method changes all that. It's time to flip the script, reverse the curse and stop giving all your fucks to the wrong things for all the wrong reasons. Not giving a fuck, the basics. Page 19. Not giving a fuck means taking care of yourself first, like affixing your own oxygen mask before helping others. Not giving a fuck means allowing yourself to say no. I don't want to. I don't have time. I can't afford it. Not giving a fuck, crucially, means releasing yourself from the worry, anxiety, fear and guilt associated with saying no. Allowing yourself to stop spending time you don't have with people you don't like, doing things you don't want to do. Not giving a fuck means reducing mental clutter and eliminating annoying people and things from your life, freeing up space to truly enjoy all of the things you do give a fuck about. This might sound selfish, and it is, but it also creates a better world for everyone around you. You'll stop worrying about all the things you have to do and start focusing on the things you want to do. You'll be happier and more genial at work. Your colleagues and clients will benefit. You'll be better rested and more fun around friends. You might spend more time with your family, or you might spend less, making those moments you do share all the more precious. And you'll have more time, energy and or money to devote to living your best life. The people who embrace the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck are winning. You want to be one of those people, don't you?